Hey everybody, this is Ben Hockman with Hockman Fabrication and Speed Shop. I wanted to put this little video together because there's a common issue amongst the community today and the uh, evolution community that is with respect to catch can breather systems and what is the most efficient system. I actually came across this myself because uh, recently I was looking into acquiring a force performance turbocharger, which I actually happen to end up with. And I realized that there was a lot of buzz in the community about people having issues with these turbos because supposedly if you don't have a good uh, crankcase ventilation system or a good catch can breather system, that the turbos themselves would actually start to produce some oil or seep some oil. Um, fortunately enough, force performance being the great company that they are, uh, looked into this, realized that there was something they could do to further prevent this from happening. Not that there was an actual issue. I mean, realistically, the turbos themselves never were having an issue. Uh, it's just a matter of the systems on the car, the breather systems, just not being up to, uh, to par for all the boost that these turbos are running. So, um, nonetheless, uh, I realized that I still want to have the most efficient system and there's uh, a debate online or in the community, therefore, whether or not a Venta atmosphere system is the most efficient way to do it or whether having it circulate back through the intake uh, and having that pull crankcase pressure out of the crankcase is the most efficient way to do things. So I decided that I was going to have both systems available to me and run testing uh, in order to determine what was the most efficient system. So right now I've currently got the Venta atmosphere system on my car. You can see that I've got a increased size of a dash 10 AN fitting off of the valve cover in the stock location. And it's running down into a catch can that currently is not visible to you, but I will be sure to give you a better shot of that. But nonetheless, it's, it's mounted right down in here. And there's a little filter on top of that. And then my intake system itself doesn't have anything plumbing back into it. So that's the current system that I'm running on my car. I'm not having any issues with oil seeping out of the turbo because like I said, force performance. Integrated some changes uh, inside of the cartridge as well as um, updating the actual filter housing that feeds the turbo. Uh, they've essentially reduced the amount of oil that goes to the turbo uh, in order to prevent it from seeping and that seems to have resolve the issue for people that don't necessarily have the best crankcase system. Uh, it's helping, you know, it's essentially putting a band-aid on the system for those guys so that they don't run into this issue. Um, and it's similar to the other turbos that are out there that are not having that issue. They're essentially just reducing the amount of oil that goes to these things so that it doesn't create enough pressure from a system that's not the most efficient to seep oil out of the turbo. Because essentially there's no real quote-unquote seals in a turbo. There's no rubber o-rings or anything like that. It's metal on metal uh, in order to create the seal to keep the oil in the turbo. And at a certain pressure, you're gonna seep that oil past that ring. And that essentially means that you're pushing pressure inside your valve cover. And when you do that, it creates a lot of turbulence and it decreases the efficiency of your car. And when we're talking about a car like this, which I'm using for this test, which happens to be my nine second Evo, then you obviously are hurting the performance of it. And when you're trying to build a performance car, it's counterproductive. So without going into further extensive detail and being long winded, which I feel like I already have been, what I've done is acquired a secondary uh, crankcase uh, catch can which is a sealed version from Saiku Michi and I've also fabricated myself a uh, a new intake that's basically a duplicate of what I already have on the car but I've integrated a dash 10 and fitting to plumb back in for this system here so what I'm gonna do is I've acquired a spare oil cap, oil fill cap, and I've integrated and tapped it with something to measure boost. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook that up to 
my boost gauge in the car and I'm going to measure the amount of pressure that I received in all different conditions, you know, idle, uh, cruising, full throttle, full throttle shifting, and then see what kind of pressure I'm reading with my current system. And then I'm going to replace my current system and plumb the sealed system and then do the same test. And we're going to measure what kind of pressure that has and determine which is the most efficient based on which has the least amount of pressure in the system after running all of those different conditions. So let's get started. All right, so we're almost ready to make our first test here. And before we do so, I wanna go over the system here briefly in a moment, but I also wanna make a quick disclaimer that I realize that there is much more extensive testing that you could do on this type of a test. This is just a small proof of concept to see just through basic measurements, which system, at least for my car, seems to be running the most efficient, okay? Now, um, there, there's more than one way to set this type of a system up, multiple ports on the you know valve cover. I just wanna get out of the way that I realize that you could do different things and you're gonna get different results. So this is just a quick test for people out there, general knowledge, based on this type of configuration, what seems to run the most efficient. Um, so without further ado, here's a quick overview of the system. I'm running a dual catch can system from Saiku Michi. The, uh, this one here is a sealed one. That one runs off of the stock PCV and then plums back into the intake manifold right here and goes down in there and connects to the intake manifold. Just like the factory configuration, it's just upgraded to a dash six size, um, hose. And for all intents and purposes, that is going to remain the same. That's not changing at all. Now, I have tapped the uh, engine oil cap here with a, uh, a fitting to gauge the amount of pressure that's running inside the valve cover. Now, you're probably wondering, why am I running this type of a fitting? Initially, I was going to just run this basic mechanical boost gauge to run my measurements. But then I realized, why would I do that when I have a nice AEM? on my car already that I can hit a button and refer back to whatever the max pressure was. That's probably going to give me the most accurate reading and also be the most convenient. So I ended up deciding to just plumb that back into my, my original gauge. Um, so that's why that's that way. And I realize again, there's a better way to do that. But again, I'm just trying to minimize cost and run a very crude test here. And it, normally it's just plumbed right here to my intake manifold and that's how I measure my boost. But I just ended up plugging that for now, connecting my boost gauge to my interior, or my connecting my boost gauge from the interior to my oil cap to measure these readings. So um, my other can is the vented can, which again is running a dash 10 off of the valve cover. It's just expanded the factory fitting to a dash 10. And then it's plumbing back into this vented catch can that's just running a filter on it. There's nothing going back into my intake right now. So let's go ahead and run the first test. All right, so we just got back from doing the first test with the Venta Atmosphere setup. And uh, it went well. I'm actually pretty pleased with the results. Uh, when we first started the car up and we were letting it idle, we saw negative 0.6 in vacuum and that ended up going you know from negative 0.6 to negative 0.8 to negative 1.0 as the car started to heat up um, obviously when it's cold the clearances are you know not as tight as they get once it gets warmed up so vacuum gets better as uh, the car gets warmed up now the minute i hit any sort of boost it immediately went to 0.0, .0. Uh, whether that was full throttle, high RPM, full throttle shifting, uh, no lifting off the throttle between gears, it would not see anything higher than 0.0, .0 which makes me happy. See, if I hit peak, it just stays at 0.0. .0. That's what the maximum it was. So at least my current system with vent to atmosphere is efficient. Um, so when it was idling or just cruising, it was in vacuum and the immediate immediately as soon as I hit boost it would just go to 0.0, .0. so 
That's the results of the first test with the vent to atmosphere configuration. We're gonna go ahead and switch it up uh, and show you that installed on the car and then we'll run the next test. Before I remove my vented catch can system, I need to drain it and I figured I'd make a quick video show you how effective this thing is. I've only been running this thing a couple of days uh, and I don't drive this thing on the daily. So it's acquired quite a bit of moisture in the system that I obviously wouldn't want in my engine. And uh, again, this is only just a couple of days worth and it's not a daily driver by any means. This probably has, I don't know, 20 miles if that on it. So effective system. Okay, so now we're all set up for the second test and we're getting ready to run that. Just to show you how things are configured right now, we're running the closed loop system after testing the atmospheric configuration. And so the difference is you can see that I'm plumbed off of my dash 10 off the valve cover and it's running down into this sealed catch can here. And then there is another line that is running up and connected into my intake. So my intake is now drawing crankcase pressure out of the valve cover when it's under boost as well as when it's at idle in other conditions. So we're going to go ahead and run a test similar to the way that we ran the last test and see what the results are. Uh, I should clarify and I realized after the fact that I neglected to clarify that I'm currently running 40 pounds of boost. So just for reference on my current setup, uh, it's an FP0 turbocharger and it's running on the 40 pound map. I do run a 45 pound map, but for the street and for this testing, I think 40 pounds is more than sufficient. So I'm gonna go ahead and get in the car and run these tests. Uh, with the closed loop system and I will update shortly. Okay, just got from the second and final test with the closed loop catch can system and right off the bat I can tell that it's more efficient. The idle and cruising conditions were consistent with the vent to atmosphere catch can. When I started up the car and it was cold, uh, negative 0.6 and as it warmed up it went to negative 0.8 or negative 1.0 uh, during idle and cruise. Uh, however, the unique thing and different uh, action, reaction that I saw from this system was as soon as I hit boost, it did not go to uh, 0, 0.0. It stayed in the negative vacuum throughout the entire drive. Whether I was full throttle shifting or full throttle, it always stayed negative. Uh, I think I saw a negative 1.0 under full throttle and then under full throttle shifting I think I saw as high as negative 1.8 so definitely a more efficient system I do know that uh, I'm going to be keeping this on my this system on my car over the the atmosphere the vent to atmosphere system simply because having uh, the system use utilize vacuum to its advantage to pull any oil vapors or you know potential crankcase pressure that could be getting built up in there out uh, it's also helping the car run more efficient so for me I'm definitely going to be keeping the closed loop system on my car I do need to uh, integrate a uh, one-way check valve though so that if for some reason I get a backfire it's not going to go into my uh, crankcase system but um, for all intents and purposes, on my car and my particular setup, this is the most efficient uh, configuration for me. So again, disclaimer, I know that depending on your horsepower and your boost levels and your needs, if you wanted to do a different type of configuration, different ports, you're gonna get different results. But if you're someone like me that has just a similar to factory setup where you've just increased the diameter of the original port and you're considering a turbocharger or something like this force performance zero I can tell you from data that having a system like this over the atmospheric ventilation system with respect to close configuration here uh, is a more efficient system so hope you guys enjoyed the video and for what it's worth use the information to your advantage certainly not trying to create a debate I know it can be a controversial topic but hope this helps you out there and be safe have fun guys